Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we're taking a look at a feature that's available to you on the Jace 8000 and now the Jace 9000, which lets you use the secondary IP port as a DHCP server to uh, potentially make your life a little bit easier when it comes to deploying other IP devices that maybe are connecting back to your Jace. So before we dive into Niagara and I show you how to do this, uh, we'll do a little quick little primer on the uh, whys and uh, then we'll jump in and actually do it. So let's get started. All right, so quick little reminder about what DHCP is. DHCP is the dynamic host configuration protocol. It's sort of what makes uh, networking work in a normal circumstance automatically where you don't even need to think about it. Think uh, you jump on to a Wi-Fi network at a coffee shop and you're magically able to connect to the internet. Well, behind the scenes, your phone is a DHCP client and that network that you're connecting to has a DHCP server. That server sends all of the details to your phone about how it should be talking on that network. So data like the IP address that your phone is going to use to talk on the network, the subnet mask, which sort of defines how big the network is, the gateway, which tells the, your phone how to get out to the wider internet, and then the DNS servers, which sort of uh, tell your phone where to go in order to map an IP address to a domain name and make domain names actually work. So that is what DHCP is. Um, and why would you want that on a JACE? Well, the first and primary reason is typically you're going to have, and this is becoming more and more the case now, uh, you're going to have a separate trunk of IP controllers that you're going to want to bring into your JACE. This could be done a whole bunch of different ways. You could have an existing network that you're jumping onto with your JACE in order to con connect to these controllers, which are also on the network. But you may want to have the ability to use a separate trunk that comes into the JACE directly. Um, ordinarily, we would use static IP addresses to do that, where we're going into each IP controller and setting the IP addresses manually ourselves. But using a DHCP server sort of uh, speeds this process up a little bit for you and automates it. Um, and it also lets you use some additional features in Niagara if those IP controllers are Niagara-based um, through provisioning that will, again, speed things up and automate things a little bit more for you. And then the other use case is kind of just a simple one where if you wanted to speed up the... Um, time it takes for you to connect or if you have a bunch of different techs who potentially are coming out to different sites and don't have a lot of knowledge about the site in particular you could use something like a DHCP server on that secondary port to make plugging into it um, a little bit quicker and easier for them. So now the limitations on uh, using this. The first one, and this applies to JS 8000s as well as 9000s, is that it, it only applies to the secondary port. You can only use a DHCP server on the secondary port. And on the 9000, you have to be using Niagara 414 or above in order to make use of it. And then this one is probably um, a relatively large limitation, depending on how complicated you want to get with your uh, DHCP usage. Um, but it's that you don't have the ability to make reservations for your DHCP server. Typically, um, if you wanted to use the DHCP server to essentially do a static IP addressing, uh, you could make use of what are called uh, reservations on that, that uh, DHCP server, where you're saying, Anytime I see a device with this MAC address connect, I want to give it this IP address and this IP address only. It takes it out of the uh, group of IP addresses that are available to other people, and it makes sure that that specific device only has that IP address. We don't have the ability to do that from within these um, settings, so just keep that in the back of your mind. So now let's jump into Niagara and actually get uh, this all set up. All right, so I've got a Jace 9000 here on my bench that I'm going to connect to. And it's just a demo uh, Jace. And I'm going to go into my TCP IP configuration. 
as you would expect, we're modifying the way our device or our JACE connects and talks on the IP networks. So we're going to be using that TCP IP configuration view that's available to you underneath the platform. So on the interface one, you'll note that we only have an IPv4 settings and an IPv6 settings. And if we open up IP, uh, our interface two, we have an additional tab, and that is our DHCP DV4 settings. So we can only do uh, um, IPv4 for our DHCP. So just another little limitation. I don't think that you're you would ever have a need to use IPv6 um, for this use case, but just keep in mind IPv4 uh, is our only option here. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that our adapter is enabled. And then we need to set an IP address for the JACE itself on that secondary uh, port um, that our DHCP server is going to live on. Our DHCP server only gives out addresses to other devices. Obviously, it doesn't give one to itself, so we have to manually set that ourselves. So I'm going to use 192.168.111.1 as my address here. And then I'm going to use the subnet mask that I think most people are familiar with. And then our gateway. Um, you don't really need this because we're not going to be talking out to the internet through this secondary port. Um, really, it's only going to be for uh, this side trunk of devices. So not necessarily uh, going to be used for anything, but we'll put it in there just so that it's there. And then the same thing with our DNS servers. We don't need to worry about those as well. Um, another thing to note is that our subnet has to be different than the subnet that's on our primary port. So you couldn't do a 192.168.1 on your secondary port in this case because it's already being used on the primary. So that's why I'm going with this 111. You could go with uh, .2 or .5, whatever uh, you need for your use cases that um, works out for you. Next part is we're going to that DHCP DV4 tab. Um, I think by default this is going to be unchecked. You're going to check it, and then we have a bunch of settings here that we can set. Uh, our default lease time, this is how long the uh, information that you're giving out to the device that's connecting is going to be valid for. Before that lease time uh, expires, that device is going to talk back to the DHCP server and say, hey, I'd like to renew that um, lease that I have, and then it'll get renewed for another six hours. You can extend this if you need to, um, but by default, I think these uh, both of these lease times are uh, perfectly adequate for our use cases. Our subnet, we're going to use the same subnet as our uh, settings for the JACE itself here on our secondary port. And then same thing for the subnet mask. But we could narrow that down so that it's smaller than what the um, what the whole ethernet adapter here is looking at if we needed to. And then we're gonna define what our low is for the range of IP addresses that we can get out. Uh, in this case, I started with 15. You could start with any number, obviously you have uh, one dot uh, one to 254 as your reasonable uh, addresses that you can use. And then we are setting the max number of clients or IP addresses that we can get out. Again, you can see here, you can set this between one and two, 240. Um, I've got 100 here as the address that I'm going to use. And then that's it. All we're doing after that is we're hitting save. It'll complain about things. Um, if you set something up incorrectly, once you go to hit the save, in my case here, you can see it turned on IPv6, which I don't want. Um, so I'll uncheck that box and then I'll hit save and the JACE will reboot and um, you'll have a DHCP server that's available to you on that secondary port for all of your devices that maybe you want to um, use and bring into the JACE um, for yourself in the future. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that's helpful and informative for you. Um, I know we've had some folks ask about uh, setting this up and what the process looks like. Pretty straightforward, as you can see. Um, so if you have any questions or comments or other things you'd like to see that are related to uh, DHCP servers or using this uh, secondary port as a DHCP server, uh, you can leave them in the comments down below. 
like and subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.